He did it. He Jay did Uso. it, buddy. You were wrong. Jay Uso won the Intercontinental Championship, man. And people want wild. What are your thoughts here on this, man? You had a feeling it was going to happen the way they were just hyping up the whole show. You know, you felt something was going to happen the way they were building it up, building it up, building it up. And they did it. They pulled the trigger. Congratulations to him. Awesome. Well deserved. Well deserved indeed, man. Um, and you just see like the, the emotions pour over everything. You see it pour over him afterwards. Um, but you see it everyone, social media online, you see these videos of these kids crying, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's really an emotional moment. People are so invested in him. Why do you think he's so over? Like, how what is the connection there with him? Cool catchphrase. The yeet. Cool catchphrase, nice merch. The story of overcoming Roman Reigns and the bloodline, people are still attached to that. He's very charismatic. The way they build him up, very the, his entrances, the yeet hand motions. They do a good job building him up. And he's not dropping the ball at all. He delivers on his part in the ring as well. You know, he does. Like, uh, he's... He's a very much well-rounded performer. I I think you're right. I think everyone's invested in the story. I think it maybe it does help the fact that he's he's had these chances and he's lost, right? Um, and it's like, when is his time going to come? Just when is it going to come? And and then finally it came, man. Like I, I think it was very good fifty fifty going into that matchup. You know, like there are definitely people, plenty of people like like me. They were saying, like, dude, Jay, if not now, I don't win for this guy, right? But then you have the other side of it, and I even admitted to the on this podcast, like, well, Braun Breaker. I mean, he's a young blood, he's the up and comer. Like, they, they, they got to have him win, right? So either way, I mean, it was a true fifty fifty in this matchup. I felt like, and uh, I feel like the right person won. Nah, I feel like you knew the writing was on the wall to where they're high 14 years. He had X amount of championships. He's never won. He's never won a single championship. So the video packages they were doing throughout the show for him, hyping this match up, telling his history, telling his story, telling his resume. I'm like, oh, well, it seems like they're going to pull the trigger here. I went to bed a little bit early because I wasn't feeling that great. Woke up the next morning, they pulled the trigger on him. And uh, it's very exciting. I mean, it's not... A mistake on anybody's point. It's not too early. It's not too soon. I'm wondering how to come up with Braun Breaker here. The thing about turning face. I don't know about turning Braun Breaker face. I don't know about that. We'll we'll see what happens. He used to be a great biggest face in NXT. Then he became such a badass heel that people started loving to cheer for him. The John Cena thing. They were were hating to like him, so they they booed him. They turned him heel, and then they thought he was so awesome as a heel, they started cheering him again. It just... uh, I feel like the dude... do that in. The dude is just built, I think, to be a heel. He could be a really good heel, I think. Um, I I feel like we're we're only like in like the first stratosphere of him of the layers that's 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 there for Braun Breaker. He's got a young guy, he's got a long career ahead of him. I think the dude has the capability of being a monster, monster heel. Face, maybe he could be like a Randy Orton type of face. Like you know, Randy Orton, he always a better heel. Capable yeah. face. I think this is probably his best face run. But like this is like what we're in the fourth quarter of his career, pretty much. Uh I don't know. For me, just Braun Breaker just seems like a badass heel, man. I, I don't see that guy being a face. Like uh, like he I know he was in the NXT, but I just don't in the mainstream, I don't feel like he'd be a great face. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine. fine. There's, a, just... there's a difference between fine and great. Well, I think I think he'll be a great face. Put words in my fucking mouth. He'll be a great face. Guarantee it. He was a guarantee great face. Guarantee it. Guarantee he was a, yeah, he know. was a great face. I don't always say great. Did you, you didn't watch it? I you didn't do watch, watch it. it. You didn't watch him in NXT. He was a great face. He face of that franchise. So much so that he was he was uh fast tracked into the main roster. He's a great face. Badass heel. You know, this, he just has the look, the persona, the gimmick, the moveset, the power to be a badass heel. But if they're going to turn him face, I just don't, I think Raw is lacking heels anyway. I think you need to keep him heel. Exactly. Keep but him heel. If you're going to turn him face, just don't make sure he doesn't get lost in the sea of faces you have on Raw, which I don't think he will, but 
I, I think you could because you have a lot more personalities and faces on that roster than Braun Breaker. I mean, let's just call a space. Braun Breaker, I mean, I, I don't necessarily think he has the gift of the yap per se to contend with a lot of the big faces on Raw. You know, like that's why I say keep him as a heel, keep him as a monster, keep him as a badass, keep his promos nice and short and sweet. You know, like he's not going to move anyone with his words right now. And that's what it takes to be a great face, like Cody Rhodes, for example. Like who do you have you know, on like, Raw? You have Gunther, Bronson, Reed, The Judgment Day. Who else? A heel? Um, yeah. It's very th- that pool is very shallow on Monday Night Raw. That's why I think Braun Breaker is a nice position as a heel. So if they're going to turn face, I'm curious where he's going to fit. But uh, where he is fit, he'll he'll knock it out of the park. But it's, I think uh, it should be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Braun Breaker. Yeah. Um, you know, you did kind of call this. So do you think there would be a rematch then? With uh, Jey Uso? Yeah. I don't know. There because we didn't, we, yeah, we didn't necessarily know. We weren't too sure if this is going to be at Bad Blood or not, right? I think uh, that we were talking about, wasn't it? That's what I, yeah. Yeah, maybe it was Bad Blood. One. Maybe, because you don't get guaranteed rematches anymore. So I don't know if they're going to make Braun, Braun, Braun earn it. Or do, does he cash it? Or does he just demand it because he's a badass and intimidates Pearson, uh, Adam Pierce? Or does he attack Jey Uso, like make Jey Uso want to, want to put his belt on line again against him? Or oh, not on line, but you know. Maybe, but then Jey Uso would have to win there. And Bronson has two, Bron, I can't call him Bronson. Bron has two losses in a row. So maybe you don't, you maybe you wait for that rematch down the road. And do whatever you Bron now. Let Jey carry his strap a little bit. Yeah. Well, good for Jey Uso. I mean, he is, it's only the second time father-son has become an intercontinental champion the first time around with Mr. Perfect and Curtis Axel. Good so, company. Uh, good company, yeah. yeah. For yeah, Mr. True, Perfect true, true, and Rikishi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good for them. I mean, I, I didn't even think about that step. That makes sense. I mean, so who's the third, third one going to be with Dominic? Because there's not that many father-son pairs anymore, really. So it's gonna be very, it's very small, small. Dominic Mysterio, uh, company. Dominic Mysterio is realistic. That could happen. It's very small, uh, very small fraternity there. And uh, congratulations, rare fried air right there, baby. <laughs> <laughs>